Hey, welcome to the Glenn Gower Podcast, the best podcast you'll listen to all day. <laughs> Sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Hey, welcome back to the show, everybody. So glad uh, you joined me. Happy Thanksgiving to you and all your family members. I wanted to do a shorter show today on gratitude. How do we give thanks on this Thanksgiving feast day, right? Uh, back in 1996, uh, I went to college at Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio. Steubenville is an old mining town. It used to be a big party town in the 1960s. And uh, my alma mater, Franciscan University, then called the College of Steubenville, was, uh, I think, on Playboy's list of college um, party schools, top 10 party schools in the country. Um, but that university had a change of heart back in the early 70s. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I love St. Francis of Assisi, and I decided to get a theology degree there. Part of going to Franciscan University is the opportunity to study at their satellite school in um, Gaming, Austria. So there was a Cartesian monastery that was uh, purchased and refurbished, and twice a year, uh, if you wanted to sign up, you could go and study in Europe for um, four months, approximately. Well, I got the opportunity, I had the money, and I went for it. So uh, back in 1990, uh, spring of 1996, January something, I flew from Detroit with a bunch of college students to Europe, and we had the time of our lives. What a great time. Well, I couldn't wait to go to Assisi. Francis is my guy. I love St. Francis of Assisi. I wanted to be just like him. And I couldn't wait to see his tomb, San Francesco's, uh, eat the gelato, uh, the whole experience in Italy. Italy is a beautiful country. So finally it came where we all jumped on two buses and headed to Rome for five days and then Assisi for five days. Well, the beginning of that trip uh, was tragic, kind of tragic. We had a pretty bad accident, and we all had to get on a different bus and make our way to Rome. And that was a bit of a foreshadow, I think, for me, interiorly, because I was about to re find out something about my heart that I had not seen before. Spent five days in Rome, had a great time, saw the Holy Father on that Wednesday audience. Um, it was really a wonderful time. But then we made our way to Assisi. And uh, this was really the, the apex of the whole semester for me. We get to Assisi and was it sunshine? Was it full of sunshine and, and beautiful weather? No, it was cold, damp. It was snowing. And I thought, here I am. After all these years, longing to be in a CC, and it's snowing. Well, a couple of my friends, they uh, heard me grumble. Uh, and they said, you know what Francis would say, Glenn? I said, what? He would say, praise the Lord. He sent us snow. <laughs> it was the last thing that I wanted to hear. But it was very necessary because it revealed something in my heart that I was unaware of. So the rest of that trip wasn't a lot of fun. It was very hard because I um, realized I'm not like St. Francis at all. I mean, at all. Yeah, there's a couple similarities here and there, but I'm just not like him. And I thought I was. And maybe I'm a fool for that. So be it. Well, that summer, I worked the conference uh, schedule for Franciscan University. Starting in June and ending early August, they have several conferences, youth conferences, um, a charismatic conference, a, a men's conference, a priest deacon's conference. I worked that whole docket. And after one of the talks at one of the conferences, I was grumbling about God the Father under my breath. And somebody looked at me like, are you out of your mind? And I said something really terrible that I'm not going to repeat on camera. Well, I noticed that and I went, what is, what's going on with my heart? I mean, why am I, what am I angry about? Or why am I grumbling? I uh, was able to pay attention to the matters of my heart. I was able to identify something was wrong. And with good friends, they were pointing out something that's wrong interiorly. 
the whole point is recognizing ingratitude. I was so ungrateful for the ability to study at a university that took us to Europe so we could go to all these wonderful places, meet all these people. I was ungrateful for that. I was ungrateful for the opportunity to study at Franciscan University. I was ungrateful. And it took some time to realize uh, the ingratitude in my heart. So today I want to talk about ingratitude, especially on this Thanksgiving Day. Why are we, so many of us Americans, not only unhappy, but ungrateful? I mean, it's one thing not to be happy, but we're ungrateful for the blessings that we've had in this country. So here are some signs. I want to start off with some signs of ingratitude. And um, you may be thinking, oh, my husband's, that's my husband, or that's my wife, or that's my kid, you know. But I really want to talk to you right now. Uh, do you struggle with any of these? The first one is, do you take advantage of other people's kindness? Do you refuse to say thank you? Or when you say thank you, um, maybe you don't mean it. Like, thank you, thanks. Three, uh, do you struggle with empathizing with people? Or are we all just a bunch of idiots? <laughs> Number four, are you never, or are you ever satisfied? Maybe nothing's ever good enough for you. Number five, do you make people feel um, unimportant? Maybe you're in a crowd, maybe you're at lunch, and you just refuse to uh, give credence to someone's presence. Number six, maybe you're not happy with what you have. You know, my, my house isn't good enough. My car is not good enough. Uh, my guitar is not a tailor. <laughs> anyway, um, you're not just happy with it. Nothing's ever good enough. Number seven, are you, uh, do you refuse to be happy for other people? That's a big one. Always tearing other people down for their success. Is that you? Here's another one. Are you just, in general, not appreciative of anything? How about this one? Do nine have a tendency to be negative or critical? Constantly finding fault with other people. That's a really big one. Negativity, critical. You know, you know a lot about a person when you ask them how things are going, and the first thing they say is they begin to complain. And the last one is just what I said. Are you a constant complainer? Nothing's ever right. So these are signs, and there's other signs. I'm sure I missed probably some big ones, but there's signs of being ungrateful. So how do you overcome this, right? That's the key to this whole podcast, overcoming. I just broke it down to two things. Now, you could go to counselors. You could do that. Um, or some good psychologists, you could do that. Um, and, and I would say some of you may, maybe you need to do that. But I think there's two things that you could do up front before you decide to see a um, psychologist. The first one is to get out of this mess of ingratitude. Ask someone that you really trust the question, what ways do you see ingratitude in me? Don't ask the question, do you think I'm ungrateful? Rather, ask the question, in what ways do you see ingratitude in me? And then pay attention. And if you're quick to dismiss them, that could be a tell that there really is something wrong. But the second thing is, uh, I think, even um, maybe more important. And it is to praise God. What do you mean? Go to church? Yeah. Praise God. Give God the praise for everything. I remember I was watching this gentleman work with the NFL receiver. Um at Belmont in North Carolina. And he was actually the president of the college and he was working with them. And he would throw the football while this receiver did a pattern and he would catch it. But the guy would say, say, thank you, Jesus. What do you mean? Say, thank you, Jesus. You caught the ball. He said, you thank Jesus for everything. See, a good relationship with God is all about gratitude. So when we give praise to God, um, there's a couple things that happen. One, we fulfill an obligation to worship. 
right? But I, as important is, too, we open up the avenues of our heart to let the Holy Spirit of God in so we can minister to our stony hearts. That's really the big one today. And praising God is a sacrifice. What do I mean? There's a song that goes, Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. It's hard to praise God. Not only does the devil not want you to do it, um, but sometimes we don't find ourselves in the right position to praise God. <laughs> well, I would say, praise God in the shower. When you get up and jump in the shower, start singing praise and worship songs or good songs that praise God. And you might say, well, I don't feel like it. That's the sacrifice. Praying that rosary, saying your prayers, reading the scriptures when you don't feel like it. Because when we praise God, it breaks through all the fluff and gets to our heart, which really what is what matters. There is a Psalm 118 that says, um, Psalm 118, verse, what verse is this? 26, I think. No, 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. You see, praising God is so key to being grateful. So my prayer for you is that you recognize, or with the help of friends, recognize ingratitude. Because it really is the disease, or one of the diseases that is a relationship killer. If you don't want to be in relationships with people, ingratitude is the way to go. Because people don't want to be around you. But God, in His mercy, wants um, healing for you. So ask someone, hey, what areas to see in gratitude and to praise God? I'll end with one story. If there's anyone, any saint in our modern um, era that could complain, it would be, or be ungrateful, it would be St. Padre Pio. Why? Now, I've talked about Padre Pio before. Padre Pio um, is one of these uh, guys who would, be attacked by a demon. I don't know if it was every night, but it was often. See, he could be ungrateful, but he gave praise to God for the gift of life. And was he worthy of being beat by a demon? He gave uh, praise to God for his unworthiness. That might sound very strange to you. But if there's someone who could be ungrateful, it would be him. And he showed much gratitude. St. Padre Pio was a Franciscan. Um, one of the things I didn't mention earlier is what is the one thing that gets in the way of being grateful? UC Berkeley had a study and said the number one thing that gets in the way of gratitude is material items. And that's why I brought in St. Francis and Padre Pio, both Franciscans who reject material items and they just want to love God with their hearts and with their souls and their being and love one another as themselves, right? So my prayer for you if you don't have a grateful heart is to choose a grateful heart. Choose to praise God. Go do some inventory. Ask your spouse. Ask your dad or mom. Or friend, in what ways am I ungrateful? God bless you. Thanks for listening to this podcast. And may God strengthen the bars of your gate. Hey, thanks for listening to the Glengower Podcast, sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Mission Blueprint is a nonprofit ministry started by Glenn and Jamie to sanctify the family. Our income is donation-based, and we need your help. Please support us financially by going to www.mission-blueprint.org and be a part of our financial team. Thank you, and may God strengthen the bars of your gate.